losing motivation? It can be hard to keep going when you're not getting positive feedback on your work. But the majority of history's most famous writers have one thing in common. They kept going despite rejection after rejection. Hi guys and welcome to another video of Historically. Here are 5 rejections that prove you shouldn't let one person's opinion convince you to give up on something you believe in. Sylvia Plath It took a shockingly long time for Plath's classic The Bell Jar to find a publisher, and even longer for it to hit the shelves in American bookstores, which it finally did in 1971, 8 years after the writer's suicide. In that time, the manuscript was rejected by a publishing house after publishing house. The several rejection letters that survive mostly acknowledge Plath's talent, but are put off by the novel's dark subject matter. One, however, is especially mean, and the reviewer didn't even get her name right. It said, This is an ill-conceived, poorly written novel and we would be doing neither ourselves or the late Miss Play any good service by offering it to the American public. Gertrude Stein Arthur Field's brutal rejection of Stein's The Making of Americans is a work of art in itself. Ernest Hemingway This one's so mean that we feel the need to reproduce it in full. This was directed to Dear Mr. Hemingway. Thank you for sending us your manuscript. The sun also rises. I regret to inform you that we will not be offering you publication at this time. If I may be frank, Mr. Hemingway, you certainly are on your prose. I find your efforts to be both tedious and offensive. You really are a man's man, aren't you? I wouldn't be surprised to hear that you had penned this story locked up at a club, ink in one hand, brandy in the other. You bombastic dispomaniac, where to now characters had me reaching for my own glass of brandy, something to live up 250 pages of men who are constantly stopping to sleep off the drink. What Peacock and Peacock is looking for in a manuscript is innovation and heart. I'm afraid what you have produced here does not fit the description. A great story, Mr. Hemingway, is built on foundation of great characters. I had trouble telling yours apart. Remind me, which is the broken-hearted bachelor who travels aimlessly across Europe? Ah, yes, they all do. As I understand it, Jake Barnes is intended to be your hero. A hero, Mr. Hemingway, is a person the reader can care about, root for. Jake Barnes is too detached, too ineffective. I doubt he'd have the energy to turn the page and find out what happens to himself. I take exception also to your portrayal of Mike. There is nothing less appealing than a character who sits blithely by while his wife sleeps with half the continent. I have not yet said anything about Brad, your only prominent female character. As a woman, was I intended to identify with this flighty girl who takes in men the way the others take in after supper coffees? Let me tell you, Mr. Hemingway, I did not. Your language characters deserve each other. Really, each one is more hollow than the next. Of course, I doubt it's possible to create a three-dimensional character with such two-dimensional language. Have you never heard of crafted prose, style, complexity of diction? It's hard to believe an entire novel's worth of pages could be filled up with sort of short, stunt sentences you employ here. Let me be specific. At the start of the novel, you sum up a key character, Robert Cohn, with just five short words. I was his tennis friend. This tells us nothing. Later, when Jake is looking out to the Syene, the beautiful historic poetic Syene, you write, the river looked nice. Nice? The river looked nice? I dare say my young son could do better. In short, your efforts have saddened me. Mr. Hemingway, I was hopeful that by 1925 the Brutes would have stopped sending me their offerings. We at Peacock and Peacock are looking to publish novels that will inspire. God knows it's what people need at this time. Certainly what is not needed are treaties about bullfights and underemployed men who drink too much. 
Sincerely, Miss Moberly Luger. Even George Orwell received this rejection of Animal Farm from the Favor and Favor Publishing House. He couldn't even dismiss it by saying the reader didn't know what he was talking about. The rejection came from brilliant poet T.S. Eliot. Your pigs are far more intelligent than any other animal, and therefore the best qualified to run the farm. In fact, there couldn't have been an animal farm at all without them. So that was what needed, someone might argue, was not more communism but more public-spirited pig. Anne Frank. That's right, even Anne Frank's diary was sent to the reject pile. The girl doesn't, it seems to me, have a special perception or feeling which would lift that book above the curiosity level, is what was said on your rejection letter. Well, remember, even the best get rejected. So if you ever get rejected, let it be a force to keep you moving forward. Thank you and have a nice one.